and welcome back to a new episode of the 10 20 minutes interview of people around the world um today we have victor from denmark who's going to be the interviewer and um hi victor <laughs> hi alisa thank you for being here it's amazing thank you for joining us i'm really excited about it oh for sure me too i, I was like I heard you were like interviewing and you asked me and I was like, yeah, I, I want to come. <laughs> no, but for real, I'm, I'm really, I'm really honored and, uh, and I'm really inspired by you. And uh, I, I guess podcasting is the new thing, right? It's a nice way for other people to get to know us. It's other. personal, it's fun. Yes. Yeah. Now where the whole world is kind of with this lockdown thingy, it's nice to, connect across countries and with people who have some level of consciousness where we where we are vibrational in match right so podcast here we come for sure for sure this is a really nice way to also let other people come to a, a nice space and kind of connect and get some words on things that might be going through themselves so i think that's brilliant definitely i agree so right. victor the interview is now given over to you. And Thank you, Elisa. Thank you. The- let me just get let me just get the mic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, no, I have some questions here, but first, uh, I just want to say it's been an honor knowing you, and uh, I'm really excited to ask you these questions. So, all right, you just came out with a book, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was like, do you have any kind of um, if anyone is listening and is being inspired by your book out there, what is the steps you you believe that people can take in this time if they want to be independent from, from the system or let's say the nine to five job? Is there any any like steps you took in your own journey that you can kind of pinpoint out just like, I don't know, three, two things that you must focus on, like take more time to yourself or if you want to, or you have some dreams or you have, a bigger goal, a uh, purpose. Many people have some purpose, feel like they have purpose out there. What is your like take on that if they want to create for themselves? The first thing is to become conscious that you're not controlled by the system, that the system is here to help you until you no longer need it. So it's for you to, to change the perception of the world reality you are a part of. When change I shift the perception. The, uh, huh? Change the perception. Change your perception. So let me give an example. When I was uh, in Denmark uh, many years ago, <laughs> uh, I was in I was in this uh, psychiatry, the mental hospital thing, and uh, I didn't work. Everything I was in the system, and in the beginning, it really stressed me out. I could barely come to a meeting because I felt so controlled by the system. I was on paper not allowed to do anything. Right. Now, what I did was I changed that perception into the system is here supporting me until I'm ready to stand on my own feet. And the moment I'm ready to stand on my own feet, I leave. So what I did was I changed that whole perception in my world reality. I spoke it out. So I told the psychiatrist, I told her and all these um, social helping people you have in the system. And they were all like, what? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be standing on my own. I'm going to have my own company and I just want to travel and help the world reality. But right now I'm fucked. So just give me as much space as possible to heal. And then I will leave the whole system. You don't need to put me out into all these temporary works or whatever, because I will just get mental. And somehow this worked for me. So what they did was they literally gave me the space to just work out and do whatever. And at a certain point, uh, I was invited to Holland. I had been there a few times and and I had this feeling, okay, now it's, now it's time for me to stand on these own feet. And I think the second lesson, because we took the first, the second lesson is don't fear falling. One of the things that has been really beneficial for me is that I have been homeless. I have had nothing. I have been a street rat. I have felt like nothing. So 
I didn't fear not having anything. What I did was I, I was just happy if I had a roof over my head and I could eat some apples, you know? So the, the fear of so losing. the fear of losing. I didn't have. Didn't so have for that. me, I could just move with the flow because what is there to lose? I already have been on the bottom and the bottom was not that bad, you know? So don't, so, don't fear failing. You can always make turns and... Yes, and don't fear this whole, what, what many people link to is the uh, material world, right? right? So, oh no, we have to pay the markets, we have to pay the house, what about the, the schools, and what about paying the car, blah, 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 all these things. For me, this didn't, didn't exist because I owned nothing. I had nothing. I had my running shoes. This is the most expensive thing I own. It's my running shoes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Most important thing, man, keep those feet safe. Yes. For uh, that's sure. a good, that's some really good. Uh, I love that. I love that. First and foremost, I think if there were ever a street rat uh, that looked like a diamond, it would be you out there, Lisa. <laughs> so that's, and that's really great advice. I love that. So it's like, uh, don't don't fear don't fear your your steps towards because there's lesson in it, and uh, maybe you will even gain some lessons from from the material by stepping back from the whole, that whole thing. So that's, sure, and that's not great, even, thank of you. Of course, if you fear it, you're, you're allowed to fear it, but it's about moving with the fear and through the fear. I have oh, yeah. had the fear along the journey, but, but when I felt this shift, the world shifted with me. Um, I always had like minus on my console, right? Because I, I had the money from the government, which is like nothing. So in, on day number three, it was empty. <laughs> so I was like, I'm always in lack. And, and then I, the universe was like, yeah, but you know, what do you do with your energy? You give it away. So now start taking money for what you do. So I told myself, and what I did was, again, I changed the perception instead of feeling that I'm always lacking. I don't right. have so, money. I so what you're saying, there's, there's going on some, uh, you're moving out from like mental states of lack and kind of reevaluating yourself where you are right now, looking at them and then changing them towards something that is more like beneficial and actually more real than what you thought you were in. Yeah, it's to, for some of the money thing was like, if I always feel I'm in a lack, what I send out is more lack. But when I realize that I, I always have food, not always I pay it myself, I also have a roof over my head. Mostly it's not my own roof. <laughs> but then money on the account doesn't really matter because whatever I need, the universe provides. And when That's you beautiful. change this perception, then you're no longer feeling lack. And when you're not feeling lack and you are in the feeling that I will always have what I need, then the funny thing I realized was that every time I, I spent the last hundred crowns on my account, I got a client and then I had 500 grounds again. And it yeah, was those always exactly, yes. So then yeah. from the chains to the trust to the surrender to knowing. So it's kind of this step thing. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Great advice. Beautiful story. Lisa. Thank you so much. I love that. Okay. And uh, we, you would talk about your travels and clearly you've been uh, traveling a lot. So what is the... If we can elaborate a little more on that, what is like two, three lessons, the biggest lessons you've learned from traveling about like seeing the world? What changes in you when you travel that much? What, what can you give to people like that, that is still at home that only been to Germany probably to get some candy or whatever? <laughs> it depends who you are as a person. For me, uh, my life is traveling. I, I have never been in the same place for long. Uh, for other people, they find comfort in being in one place in a longer time. What I do see, no matter where I go in the world, is you will always find recognition in some way. So even that you learn new cultures, you see new aspects, you see beautiful changes. Um, there's always something that's familiar. So for those who fear stepping out and fear exploring the world, you will always find something that reminds you of something you know, because we are just people and soulmates are all over the globe, even in countries where you don't understand the, their languages. I've That's been a lot in Eastern Europe and, uh, and in Hungary, not a lot of people speak uh, English and the same in uh, Bosnia. 
But oh, yeah. I see people's eyes and I meet the soul connection. I'm like, I love you, you know. But we couldn't talk together. It's just this moment of recognition, and it makes you feel safe no matter where you go. Um, so it's to be open your perspective, and if you have a longing to go out, go out. And not for everyone. Uh, are supposed to stay out. Some people just need to go out to realize they have to go home. So trust. Yes. Trust and take the leap. Take the journey. Book the flight. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid that only good things is at home. No, 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 no. The world is like, it's a crazy place, but it's a beautiful place. Yeah, like, I agree. If you will <laughs> never, I have never regret taking anywhere. Like, even when I was in Syria, which was absolutely crazy, I don't regret it. The the experience brought exactly what my soul needed. It's always like this. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for answering that question. It's very inspiring. So I have I have a, a little thing now because the thing that we're all kind of going through. Should we stay? Should we go? Should we make our own business? Uh, what's the next step for all of us in 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 these times and i want to hear your thoughts about grounding self-love and even exercise because i know that you uh, love exercise and you're doing it probably for all your life and uh, personally i think you're brilliant at it and uh, i know you personally from uh, from a fighting club we went to once uh, so i know you can <laughs> kick some ass as well which is awesome <laughs> What, what's your thought on exercising, grounding, and how, how some, do you have some tips for people out there that might be inspired by you? And how, how can they embody that energy or embody that calmness? It's, it's really, you need to figure out what works for you. Many people, when they talk about grounding, they're all about meat and red socks. And, and, you know, for me, grounding is for my soul wanting to be in my body. So what does it take for my soul to want to be in my body? And for me, it takes a big amount of freedom and feeling safe in my own existence and working out. (laughs) Because working out does that I can feel my physical being. Um, And it disattaches my feelings from everything around me, which makes me more self-aware. So for someone who are one with everything as a constant, then going to boxing and feeling just this whole physical thing. (laughs) It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a person. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really to find find out what what works for you. Um, but in this time, groundation is super important because of all the madness that's going on. It's important to tune into our own reality. Yeah, Even I feel going more on. dense so that my body feel more at ease because it is needed. So yeah beautiful that's beautiful i like that i really like really really like that so like grounding a lot and uh, fill your body make yourself some uh, environments what suits the individual to feel that presence and give yourself allowance and security to go inside and feel that that's beautiful exactly that's beautiful can i just can i just say one more time that your energy is fantastic (laughs) <laughs> i don't know if, if the people i don't know if the people on the podcast like uh, know this but i met elisa a couple times and every time i, I get into a press there's this energy which is just beautiful energy like you can't can't help but get a uh, positively affected by it it's beautiful likewise <laughs> blessings blessings all right so one of my last questions let's see if uh, we have more time but is that when you when you are in this zone when you people call it flow state or people call it inspiration or intuition what role does that play in your life and do you have any tools for other people to tune into that because many people they, they think inspiration is something you maybe have to accumulate through knowledge necessarily like you've got to learn a new book to get some tools or some self-help development uh, coaching to start taking those steps towards your own self-development, self-realization. What is your thoughts upon, on intuition and, and how like this whole guidance and trust the universe, like how, how does that, how can we embrace that? What are some tools to get connected to that? 
again, it, it really is different from person to person. For me, I'm just born intuitive. I do not know how not to be it. <laughs> and even when I think I'm not, I still am. So for me, it was all about just surrendering to existence and, and listening to my mind telling me all the things that I do wrong while my spirit was doing the only thing it can do with this being and, and, and following that intuition. Um, and I forget about it. So I can sit at the like, oh, I feel so bad. I want to change country. And then the moment I change country and the next day, the whole country closed down. And I'm like, oh, that was what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's for beautiful. other people who are um, uh, very controlled by the mental reality, for them right. it's more to to experience it. So so see it in practice, being like, okay, I surrender to 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 feel, and what I feel, I will let my mind translate into understanding. So they learn to not be controlled by their mind, but learn uh, to use the mind to navigate in their feeling reality that's beautiful i really like that i really like that that's 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 i like how you say it's it's an individual thing then you give like your own perspective on like so if people feel the same way they can lean into also that what it was it was actually like not only uh it's like a gut feeling sometimes right yeah definitely yeah, it a gut feeling Definitely. It's really just trusting yourself more than what you read and what you hear and what you've been told. It's, it's tuning in because the, the thing why people get so confused is because what our, what our mind is designed to pick up uh, environment, uh, memory of what you have learned and what you have heard. So your mind is right. this big mix of perceptions outside of yourself, right? Also your own understanding, but also outside of yourself. So <laughs> when people are like, yeah, I get lost in mental perspective, this is why. It's because you have so much stored in here that doesn't necessarily mean that that is what you feel in here. So if you want to let your mind guide you, which there is a lot of people who have to because their mental awareness is so big, <laughs> it's yeah. to go to the space inside of your mind which makes sense. And then you, you bring that feeling into your heart and feel if it makes sense in your heart as well. If, if there is this alignment between thought and feeling, it's an integration within you. But if there is a disalignment between thought and feeling and you're like, I, I can't really go there or it doesn't feel good or whatever, then there's a disbalance. And then there is another thing to reflect upon because then it's not in line with what you feel in your heart. That's amazing integration. I like that from, from the mental and get to feel that through. Is it resonating in, inside your body as well, not only making sense in your mind? 2022 really is a time where, where, we, where we have to connect the mental reality with the emotional reality. We have been focusing a lot on, on opening our heart and, and all these things. But in order of manifesting on earth, we need to take the consciousness from our mental awareness down and combine it with our emotional um, existence so that we can manifest what we wish for. If these two are uh, separated, we are attracting all kinds of things we don't really want. <laughs> and we are right. sending out all these mixed signals of what and we prefer. We are complaining sense. about wow, where, where's my manifestation yes. at? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I can relate to that. I can like have, have this, this um, I really want to manifest this, this, and that. And I'm not really putting out the right vibrations inside myself. I'm not being in alignment with that state. Yeah, that's, it's that's a challenge true. for all of us. <laughs> it is. It's beautiful. That's that's why it's so good that there's like podcasts like this that who can like tell people, all right, this this is where it's at. This is where it's at. And you're not one... alone. The whole thing we're... about oh. people being just known, you're not alone. We're in this together. It's all hard for a lot of us. And it's okay. It's it's okay. It's part of being in a human body, you know. I agree Earth. so much. I agree so much. Hold, hold the space. That's the, the messages I get all the time. Hold the space for yourself, first and foremost, that you're doing what you can and you're beautiful as you are already. Like that's, yeah. that's definitely. So for all people that are listening, like always have that in mind. 
I have, I have a quick question, Liz. Uh, I know you have a lot of tattoos and uh, <laughs> everyone has different opinion about tattoos, but I personally, I, I think they're amazing on the human body. What's your favorite tattoo and what's the story about it? My favorite? Is, is, it a, is it a place that you can show here? Or is, it, is it hidden? I think, yeah, I, I must say this is probably my favorite. That's the first one I, I really saw when I met you the first time. I was like, wow, that's that's some Illuminati going Stands on right out, there. But right? I, I, I had to look closer and, and I saw the bigger picture. What is, what's your thoughts on that? So um, many people actually get scared. They are like, why are you uh, why are you having Illuminati on your chest? Are you are you are you Illuminati? That's, and I look at the them and thought, like, right? look <laughs> look me in the eyes. Do I look evil? <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, so they're all seen. I what, what it means to me is that it reflects where I come from, what I come at, and why I'm here. Basically, so it, it's it, it's like like a geometric form from the star system that I come from and the all seeing eyes that I'm, I believe I'm here seeing people's soul purely, but a part of my job on earth is this thing with the wall grids and the pyramids and, and the linking soul to soul. And the whole infinity thing is just because nothing is ever ending. Oh my God. So, <laughs> so oh my God. Yeah. Nothing is ending, guys. You heard it here. No, like everything is always transcending, but it never stops. It just transcends into something else, right? Oh yeah, so, I agree. So it's this feeling of wholeness. And then at the same time, um, people have this fear of Illuminati because Illuminati have used this symbol for ages for creating the hijack. This is right? the, the symbol, right? Exactly, but it comes of something beautiful. It comes of something good. So I'm a little bit of a rebellion uh, angel on earth. So I thought, well, let me just place it in the center of my heart and turning into sparkle and love. So that's, that's alchemy. It. That's alchemy right there. So if anyone was curious, now you know. Now you know the whole story. Exactly. <laughs> and that, and there, that, that's a death tattoo story. Like some people just point and like, oh, it's just, it just looks nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, I picked not, it on a category. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's amazing. Thank you for answering that. I, I'm sure many people were actually uh, wanting to know that one. I thought so. I, I actually got so. a few emails about it over the years. So I had been thinking about explaining it. I think I might have done it at a workshop a few times, but it, it's good that now we have it there. We have it in it's podcast It's beautiful. Version. We, have, we have it set in stone now, or yes. podcast at least. There is no, <laughs> no place for confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to elaborate a little bit on, uh, on that because I thought it was something that's very beautiful. And that's many of the things that, I believe, and and I think that you 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 have that that um, that way of perceiving it as well. That all these symbolisms is is holding much of humanity back from actually getting closer to many of the relics or histories that uh, is very sacred to to our human history. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's so demonized, many of these, uh, like the pentagram, for example, that's uh, I think everyone connects that with demonology right when they see the yeah. pentagram but it's oh, actually a, a, a sacred ge ge geometry sign right it's it's sacred yeah. geometry and that holds so much beauty in itself so how how can do you have any advice like to say people just just go into it just yeah what, take, what we need take to take your own what, what we need to understand is is that um out in the universe where geometry is created <laughs> There is no good, there is no bad. It's just creation. So the energy we put into it and how we manipulate it and what we use it for is what creates the good and the bad. So geometry is free for everyone to use and it's up to each individual how they perceive it and what they use it for. Of course, if you have a geometric form that you've been using as a gateway to darker forces for centuries <laughs> you cannot just go like da, 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 i'll take this and i'll make it light because then what what it does it's it has all this dark force created around it and, and then um you pull towards that first you know so it will take a lot of consciousness to change something from something dark into something light but 
again, I have to say, it's also something I love that. that can be created in a blink of an eye. It's all about the perception and the full trust of what is within your own being. Nothing. Right. Evil a good example go of that would be the, sw the swastika, right? Huh? A good example of that would be the swastika, right? How they mm. they used that for so long, but yes. it was like before all that, it was like a Buddhism, and it's all it's many many past religions and exactly. and cultures, but. Yeah. And people, being, they have this thing where they, they hold on to the grief, they hold on to the heaviness. So the swastika now is this representation for what, Second World War, right? Like, oh! So, so they have this thing where, where this is what they link it to. And they forget all the beauty because the density of the pain is what pulls them down and therefore they remember it. So we have to learn to focus on the freedom instead of the right. density pulling us it's away about from. letting go lately letting go let be light become light or just um be authentic so letting go yeah, of what doesn't serve well, you yeah. but be okay with where you at because right now honestly nobody is feeling super great like no one <laughs> and it's okay it's really about surrendering to where you add and loving yourself for exactly that. You're not too dark, you're not too light, you're exactly what you're supposed to be in this very moment. I agree so much on that. I love that that notion that you say that you can only really be authentic and be in your emotions when you allow it. Yeah. When you allow yourself to be in that space and give yourself love for that. That's beautiful. I, I said this to myself once. I said, how can you be mad at creation? Or, or your own manifestation when you are part of creation. You can't be mad at creation for creating that. And no, not just that. So and you and before and when we exist in this spectrum of dark and light and hot and cold. And for you to know where you are, there's gotta be variance. Of course you can you can end out in an extreme and that's uncomfortable. But before we can feel anything, we gotta be in between these two energies. Yeah. And and they're all like you say, they're just they're just this. So it's not really good and bad in that way. It's just a manifestation. I love that. Exactly. We gotta feel it. Flow with it, <laughs> even when it's not Look, flowing. Go with the go with the flow, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much, Elisa, for this this beautiful podcast and for your time. I absolutely love so, connecting with you. So welcome, and I'm so happy that you wanted to join us. My pleasure. It really is. It really is. I ha I'm curious. Is this is this going to be like an all around the world thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> yes. Okay. So for all of you guys who are watching, I have to remember to say this thing because this is a YouTube, it's a YouTube thing. So push the subscribe button in the button, Ta -da! or the like button, or I think maybe there's two buttons, and. Um, if you have any comments to me or Victor or whatever we are talking about, you can just write it in the comments below and uh, we will read it and we will look into it. And thank you guys for watching and we will see you next week. Diddy!